today's episode. Today, it's just me all by myself. For the first time in about, oh, maybe two and a half years, I'm not interviewing somebody. I actually really enjoy doing interviews because I love talking to people and finding out about people. And I really don't enjoy as much to do a podcast by myself because I feel like I start lecturing and I turn into a newsreader that's just droning on for far too long. True or not, that's what goes on in my mind. But anyway, today I'm doing one by myself because I want to talk about Christmas and I want to talk about the difficult side of Christmas. So this year I've lost a few friends and I wanted to have a few conversations with experts in how to deal with grief and not just grief for yourself, but other people's grief. How do you support people who have lost somebody close to them? What do you say to them? Because I always get stuck with that kind of thing. I never know. I don't want to be patronizing. I don't want to add to their pain. I don't want to pity them, but I also don't know what to say. What is it you do say? What, how is the best way to make people who've lost somebody close to them feel comfortable and feel like accepted? Because one of the things that I realized is grief in our societies is actually something that you do in private. That's the expectation. I remember when I was very young, and I shared this in one of the podcasts, but I remember when I was quite young, maybe eight or nine, and one of the boys in my class, it turned out that his mother had been killed in a gas explosion. And I remember that he was taken to the headmaster's office and he was told the news, and then he was given a moment to himself where they left him in the room to deal with his grief. And that's what we do to people. I'm I'm not saying that we'd necessarily do that to a child. These days, I doubt we would. But there is an expectation that when you're having a negative emotion, you go off and deal with it by yourself. It's not something that is shared in public. In, In our society, I'm talking about in Western society, we feel that grief is a very private emotion. It shouldn't be displayed publicly. It shouldn't be shared. So we're not educated in how to deal with grief. We're not taught how to support people who are going through grief and how to support ourselves when we're going through grief. It is not okay in general. It is not okay for us to show signs of sadness or grief. We keep that in and we do that in private. So that becomes a very difficult thing to do in the lead up to Christmas and over Christmas because that's when the time is we used to being around family and when we would normally spend that time with somebody close and that's when we're going to miss them the most. But I've got to be perfectly honest here. I did not have any intention of talking about grief in the lead up to Christmas. It was actually one of my guests that suggested that I do so. I was going to do something else. I was going to do different podcasts in the lead up to Christmas. But one of the guests that I've got coming up, she said, no, 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 no. This is actually the perfect time for it because it's when people struggle the most. You might struggle at other times during the year, the person's birthday, the date that they died, when that kind of comes around. But Christmas, it's a universal issue for anybody who's lost a loved one. So over the next few weeks, I'm not going to do the usual Christmas thing. We are actually going to be talking about grief. And I'm talking to, I've got four separate episodes coming up. One lady called Maria Lessi, she lost her husband. He died of a brain aneurysm. So he just literally dropped dead when he was in his mid forties and they had two very young children. And she has now dedicated her life to supporting people in going through grief. And she's got some incredibly insightful Uh, ideas as to how we deal with it ourselves and how we can support other people. And one of the things that she suggests is not long before her husband died, they happened 
to talk about what would happen if one of them died suddenly. How would they want to be for their kids? What would they want their children to, what would they want their children's life to be like? What would they want them to experience? And that was a conversation that they had that most of us don't. And it's like, when when I, this is me personally, when I, something doesn't go the way I wanted it to, or I don't respond in a way that I particularly like responding in, or I enjoyed, or I lost my power, whatever, I have a think about it. And it's, I behave like that because I don't have a plan B. If something happens, I react. It's not necessarily the best way of dealing with it, but I haven't got an option unless I've previously thought about that situation. And it's the same with this. Because her and her husband had spoken about it and had spoken about what they'd want to do with the kids, what they'd want to do with their lives, what their funeral was going to look like, she knew what she was going to do. So she had a guide to help her through every moment of the day, to help her through that funeral, to help her through the next 12 months, two years, the rest of her life. She knew what she was going to do because she had that planned out. We don't have those conversations. They're not conversations that we want to have. I mean, let's face it, who wants to sit down with their loved ones and go, okay, so if I die, here's what I want you to do. It's kind of not something that we want to spend our Saturday night over a glass of wine talking about. But what if that's exactly what we ought to do to make not just our lives easier, but also if we're the ones that are dying, makes our loved ones' lives easier because they can help. It just helps them with all the planning and everything. I lost a friend a few months ago and he actually planned his funeral and everything down to the nth degree. Now, he had terminal cancer and he'd had it for a long time. So he was fully aware of what was going to happen. And it made everything so much easier for his family. I've got a lady coming on to talk about that. How do you talk with people about um, your funeral? How do you plan your funeral? How do you make this a happier experience and something that we want to do? And then... We also talk in another podcast about how do you talk to people who've lost somebody? How do you support them at this time of year? How do you support children at this time of year? Because if they've just lost their father or a sibling or their grandmother or whoever, how do you support them? What do you say? How as a family do you deal with that grief? Because I know for me, I find Christmas quite a challenging time of year. I always loved Christmas growing up. I'm from the UK. I absolutely adored Christmas. And then we came to Australia. And while I love Christmas over here, it's not Christmas because it's in the middle of summer. And you'd think, I've been here 31 years for crying out loud. You'd think I'd be used to it by now. I'm not. I cannot get used to the idea of Christmas being in the height of summer. My kids love it. I really don't enjoy it at all. So for me, I've had that uh, quandary of really not feeling like it's Christmas, but having to make the most of it because of the kids. And I'm kind of never settled into that. So Christmas is particularly stressful for me because I feel like I'm operating over the top of, I don't want to do this. This isn't the right time of year to make everybody else's lives happy. And a couple of years I've actually escaped for Christmas. We've gone on holiday and it's been amazing. And I'd like to do that every year if I could. Or I'd like to go back to the UK and celebrate Christmas over there or go and have Christmas in the snow somewhere because it isn't Christmas. Now, when you add in dealing with somebody's grief onto the top of all the normal stresses of Christmas, if you've got kids and you've lost your husband or you've lost your brother or your daughter or your best friend, how do you deal with that on top of all the Christmas stresses? So I'm not going to go with the usual, let's all see how we can organise Christmas, what's the best way of surviving Christmas thing. I'm going to talk about something completely different and we're going to be talking about grief for the next four weeks. So I hope you enjoy that. I've actually 
it's been a real eye opener for me talking to these people. I enjoy talking to all my guests. I have the best job in the world, I've got to tell you that, because I get to ask lots of different experts all the questions that are on my mind, and I really love it, I've got to say. This is something that's kind of stopped and made me pause for a number of reasons. Oh, one of them is the expectations. And I had never considered this before. As a society, we have expectations on how grieving widows or grieving mothers or grieving husbands are supposed to behave. We have expectations and it, they come in the form of how long should you be sad for? How should you behave? How long? You, do you remember the old, in Victorian times, you had to dress in mourning in black for so many months, 12 months or something. And Queen Victoria never came out of the black. She wore black for the rest of her life after Albert died. She never recovered from it. When is it okay for us to move on? And is there a difference in our expectations as to when you should move on between women and men? Here's a hint. Yes, there is a difference. I hadn't even realised that until I started thinking about it and looking at it with one of my guests, Marie. She said, men are expected to move on. Yes, you be unhappy and sad for a few months and then you move on. Women, it's kind of, in general, kind of, no, it's wrong for you to move on. You should be mourning your husband. You should be mourning your partner. It's, um, oh, and how much judgment do we place on that? And, and I'm talking about myself here. I'm not not including myself in this, right? We judge people for how much we perceive them to be grieving or not. So the lady whose husband died, Maria Lessi, they'd decided between them, her and her husband, that if one of them died, they would want to create their children's lives to be as happy as possible. And so that was her guiding star. She calls it her North Star. That was her North Star after her husband died. Every moment she kept asking herself, what can I do to make my children's lives happy? And that she's not talking about not allowing them to grieve or not allowing them to be sad or anything. It was just a choice that she constantly made. Okay, she accepted that they were going to be sad and they were going to miss their dad and everything else. But okay, how can we make this happy? How can I make sure that they have the best life that they can? So everything Marie did was guided by that choice to try and make her children's life as happy as possible. But she got judged for it and she got criticised you know, she wasn't mourning her husband enough. And then she said, I'd just get these looks. Oh, you're happy. Um, but he only died a few months ago, obviously. And this is the next thing that comes out of people, comes into people's mind. Obviously, she didn't love him very much. That's what we do. So I've just had, interestingly enough, the best time delving into grief in Western societies because it's a really fascinating look at things. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And I, I would really like you to share these episodes with anybody that you know, who's had a loved one pass on, because it could be really important. And even for yourself, you know, we all lose people constantly. Listen to them, share them and see if you can offer a helping her. Oh God, that sounds rubbish. And see if you can look, Hopefully they'll help somebody. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. And have a wonderful Christmas and a thoroughly enjoyable Christmas, regardless of whether it's hot or cold, snowy or 40 degree sunshine. Have a wonderful time. And thank you so much for being part of my journey this year. I hope you've enjoyed all the podcasts and I would love for you to get in touch with me and tell me which have been your favourite episodes this year. I'll talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this episode be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted and rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends please thanks so much for listening and i hope you're leaving with some great ideas that can make a difference in your everyday life until next time